I've been thinking recently how many people do, in fact, find a calling in life and how early uh, many people have that experience. It's uh, probably a curse for some people, but I think I knew from a you know, pretty young age that, that art was something I was interested in. One aspect of the work that we could use as a kind of common ground is this flirtation with craft. The word common has come up for me in artist statements and proposals over the years. Both sides, both definitions. The idea of something being common as a shared thing, but also something that's ordinary, that is accessible to a viewing audience. Uh, it's something that we all know, and it's something that's quite ordinary. It's something that uh, anyone could imagine, a piece of cardboard and an X-Acto knife and maybe a bit of glue. So I like that access point for an audience, a common and recognizable form. For me, working on almost any project, but specifically a site-specific project like this, there's only so much you can know before you install the work. There's only so much I can know for sure before I get here with the materials that I've assembled, and then we have to find out what, what's going to happen. There were two starting points for me, two very clear starting points, and one of those was uh, the notion of relief sculpture. Not something I'd ever really spent a lot of time thinking about. The egg carton motif had some significant contact points. The fact that uh, Hans Hacke had done some weird project on a chicken farm in New Jersey, sort of like that connection. So those were the elements that gave me the momentum to get the thing started in the studio, and this is what we ended up with. The patterning here, we give the wall a voice. Relief sculpture gives architecture a chance to speak. Of course, one of the contradictions involved in this piece is that, in fact, these cones, these egg cups, are famously employed as sound insulation in uh, whatever sort of suburban garage scenario you can think of. So rather than giving the walls a voice, they're actually deactivating the sound in the larger space. There's no question that uh, geometry is involved in both bodies of work, but it's not exactly complex geometry. I loved geometry as a high school student. When we got to calculus, I was out. Something about pattern and geometry, you know. These are primary fields for a visual experience. This project actually was the first time that I have had the opportunity to design something this large on the computer. It was drawn simply as a vector and chopped out for cutting. But then the assembly is all hand done. It's cardboard and hot glue. It was going back to a material I knew well from earlier. There are thousands of pieces and it must have taken almost a thousand hours to assemble, I would guess. The influence and the lasting impact of conceptual art which didn't necessarily forbid the, the use of craft, but there's a degree of hyperbole, clearly, in the jalousie work. This is basket weaving on some level, plain and simple. Jalousie is the colloquial French for Venetian blinds, which are used to obscure vision. So I thought that if I could weave a blob out of Venetian blinds, that from a conceptual standpoint, I had something there. I think it's really important that a viewer find space, mental space and physical space, to look and to generate their own meaning when they're looking at work. My program is to make sculpture, to make art, and to enable thought, to promote thinking um, without telling people what to think. And I hope there's lots of room for people to move through these shows and, and uh, generate their, their own meaning.